This was quite a funny episode. Not a ton happened. We did see a kiss finally happen. But I gotta say, this overall was just a fun episode just to watch. Seeing all 10 girls together honestly makes me happy. Uh, as of right now, we don't get a ton of it in the manga. But I enjoy seeing all of them interacting because it's just, they bounce off of each other. They, they do so great doing that. But without further ado, guys, let's get to it. So we start this episode with a theme. It is Christmas time. And what better time than to for Christmas for romance, you know? They kind of go with each other. And I love how the episode starts off with having, uh, having excuse me, uh, Mao just talking about how her Christmas adventures are with guys and how they're happy at the very end of it. And I gotta say, Mao is my favorite outside of Akane, <laughs> honestly. Mao is a treasure. I hate that in terms of possibilities, she's among the lowest. And I don't, I'm not rooting for her very hard. I hate it, but it's just how it is for me. But we have them talking about how other girls have advanced. We see Akane proposing to... Uh, Hayato, him being shy about that. We don't even have an answer about that yet. We have Riho, who had the opportunity to show off to her parents uh, that Hayato is her boyfriend, but didn't do it. And then we have Shigaraku, who honestly is probably last in terms of competition. And she's concerned. She feels like she is behind. She actually gets serious about it. And I also love how they're kind of comparing everything and even having Ami kind of being the dark horse that could possibly win it. She's a sleeper. So who knows? But with the girls having their conversations, we have Riho Shigaraku and we have uh, Akane all thinking about, well, I got to make something happen. Something needs to happen. I need to make it happen on Christmas. And... So Christmas arrives, everyone's there. I love how Hayato has a little bit of optimism, thinking it's going to be a fun old time, it's going to be good, it's going to be fun. No talk of romance, it's just going to be all the girls, you know, marry a good time. And of course, you know, initially everything's fine. We have Shigaraku actually sitting next to Hayato. Uh, Akane and Riho sit across from her. And Riho is bold. She goes right for the strategy of trying to take out Shigaraku first with giving her alcohol that backfires unfortunately thanks to the cat <laughs> then she tries to spook out Akane but that kind of backfires on her with Akane re going over to Hayato and trying to kind of like have him protect her and uh, I thought that was kind of fun uh, obviously Hayato's like look there's no grave sites here there's nothing going on and Riho's plans are in the trash like nothing good happens there uh, the Christmas gifts go out, Hayato gets the first gift, and it's a um, vibrator, which, of course, he doesn't keep. He throws to Mao, and Mao just gives it to Oka, causing her to faint, which was funny. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, and so, the party end basically ends, uh, Hayato and everyone cleans up, and Shigaraku actually wants to get something out of all this. And she gets a kiss out of it. She is not drunk. Which was funny, because Hayato is very used to these antics at this point. He's like, this is just another day. He's acting normal. Uh, the following day, she's all uh, flustered, and she's not sure as to what to do. And we see that, you know, she comes out and says, you know, I kissed you. That was my first kiss. I wasn't drunk and any of that. And I, it was just fun to watch, because she's embarrassed, thinking that Hayato just doesn't care. And Hayato's like, look, you've done this before. Ami, get her the receipts. Like, I love that she shows her how she actually acts when she's drunk. But then after this confession, we have another moment where we have them all basically being in the court session. And Mao is kind of taking proceedings of it. And I, th I thought that was just funny. Just seeing how, you know, they're prosecuting... Uh, Shigaraku for kissing and now they have this whole ordeal going on because of it and I think it's just fun just to watch them go at it like back and forth and then having her look even worse when they bring up the whole mushroom thing and her trying to smell it I, it was just funny 
And then, of course, with the other girls, we see that with uh, Oka, they, they throw her under the bus. Poor girl. I, I really hate it for her. They throw her under the bus, and they have her basically just having, you know, the blame for her being the closest to his thing. Uh, Akane and uh, Riho are like, you know, this is starting to get a little old. And it's just funny. I, I, I love how they're all acting and just kind of going at it with each other. But then we have... The final verdict, of course, from Mao saying that she's innocent, she's fine, there's no need to worry. However, and I love how she kind of just kind of imposes here, because of the fact that Shikaraku basically kissed him, I, we, I, we allow that Ami, Riho, Oka, and Akane all have the right to kiss him and can do so guilt-free. And I just thought that was hilarious. Like, just another day of antics here. Nothing, again, nothing major happening. It's just a good, fun moment to have. And I absolutely love seeing that in this episode. I thought it was fun. It was a good good, good laugh for me just to see these girls going at it. And like I said, they are, they are best when they're bouncing off of each other. But overall, good time. Let me know what you guys think, though. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, you guys, stay safe, take care of yourselves and others. And I'll catch you all later.